Hello all. Thank you for coming to the talk. Um, as already introduced, my name is Umesh Tangat. Uh, I'm a search engineer at Yelp. And today I'm going to talk about our migration from a custom distributed uh, Lucene-based search infrastructure to a one based on Elasticsearch. Uh, before we begin, a quick word on Yelp's mission. It is connecting people with great local businesses. Um, here are some of the numbers I'm allowed to share um, because these were out in our last latest earnings call. Um, the important things here are, as of end of Q1 2019, we have 184 million reviews, all of which are searchable. The monthly average of unique visitors who visit Yelp uh, in the quarter was uh, 100 million, combining the website and the app. And this translates to billions of queries served per year uh, by our search. All right, so this is a screenshot of our um, dub, 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 uh, our website page, but the app looks similar. Um, so for, uh, when I say Yelp search or Yelp core search, I'm essentially talking about this page here. Uh, if you see, there's uh, a box for free text, which uh, is used by our customers to type in, um, let's say, food or delivery, uh, look up for businesses by name, like McDonald's maybe, uh, and more recently also things like services, uh, plumbers, or you want a quote from a plumber or to fix something uh, else. Uh, and there's a location component as well, which is the other box here. This is going to be important uh, in the talk uh, later as well. Cool. So how did our search architecture look like until recently? One thing to keep in mind is Yelp was founded in 2004, and I think search code base was pretty much one of the early code bases at Yelp because search functionality, search functionality has existed uh, ever since Yelp has existed. So these decisions were made in like 2006, 7 maybe. So we didn't obviously have Elasticsearch, or we probably didn't have Solar either. So the developers back then uh, decided to use Lucene. And of course, we ran into the problem of scale. So we decided to distribute Lucene and manage uh, and orchestrate this um, cluster ourselves. So um, here I'm showing the uh, leaf search nodes. Uh, what I mean by a leaf search node is each node essentially serves one Lucene index. Uh, and very simply put, it's a master follower architecture uh, backed by REST. So the indexing request uh, goes to a master which takes the writes, uh, which is written to Lucene index. Periodically, which is typically every three to four hours, we would snapshot this index to S3. Uh, and, then the re uh, and then the followers, which were a, a pool of followers, as I'll talk about it later, they would be also restarted periodically, pull these uh, Lucene indexes from S3, and serve the queries. All right. And as I said before, uh, this uh, works only f on one node per JVM. So obviously, our data does not fit in one node. So what do we do? Uh, of course, we shard. Um, so this brings certain complexities now. So like I mentioned before, uh, our business model, uh, the search is really uh, naturally sharded on geography, because you're looking for restaurants near you or in a particular city, or you're looking for a plumber near your house or whatever. So we would shard them geographically. And then now we need to put a coordinator service in front of this. The task of this is, Kind of similar to uh, the Elasticsearch coordinator these days, where it gets a request, it routes um, to the correct indexing node or the search node, um, and the rest is the same. The one detail that is missing here, which is also taken care of by the coordinator, is kind of the scatter gather. What that means is, um, if you see the sharded Lucene follower, for example, that is further sharded, what we call micro shards. So that allows us some more parallelism. So the coordinator would uh, send a broadcast to like scatter request to all the micro shards, get back the result from uh, all the micro shards, and then do a resort or merge sort kind of. Uh, so as you can see, this is quickly getting um, complicated because we could run potentially most of our ranking um, in the Lucene uh, followers, but then if the results were really tiny, the relevance team could also run some of the ranking or the more expensive one in the coordinator service, um, and we'll talk about it later how this is not the best thing to do. So now that we know a bit about the system, what are the issues with the system? Like I said, once initially when we began, it was maybe a handful of engineers. And the goal was, let's get search up and running. But with time, uh, the team grew. We had specialized roles. Uh, and this became a department of probably 30 plus people. Uh, there were roles, uh, specific roles for specific people who were motivated to do specific tasks. For example, the relevance experts 
their uh, motivation or primary goal was let's make the results look better uh, from a quality perspective. And the infrastructure team, on the other hand, had an orthogonal uh, kind of a primary goal, which was availability of the system and performance uh, and reliability. So what happens is when your code base is not designed from the start, start or the get-go to handle these two uh, cross-cutting concerns separately, the code is entangled. So you try to make change in the relevance. It's really hard to not break something or really slow down uh, maybe uh, latency of queries and vice versa. If you try to port out, let's say, some of the sharding logic or reshard, it's really hard to not break some of the relevancy, thereby causing a regression. Uh, aside of this, the iteration speed is really slow. Because uh, for me, for example, I work on a search infrastructure. So for me, it's really hard to understand why we are running certain kinds of scorers or rankers with these models. Um, and it's hard to just isolate my changes uh, from this code base. Um, it was an operational burden, of course, because 2006 or 7 when we began this, compared to 2015 or 16, when we wanted to uh, deprecate this, the size of data had grown humongously. Um, so our typical fix was, okay, let's throw more instances, let's shard again, let's add more replicas for uh, parallelization, and, uh, or also add micro shards. What this means is our cluster gets bigger, the code pushes get slower. Note how I said that our rankers also ran in Lucene. So every, this is a team of multiple number of engineers now trying to push code multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day. We have to do a rolling restart of the entire cluster. And the bigger the cluster, the, by nature of it, it's going to be slower. Um, and it was more fun, uh, besides of just the slow code pushes, we also uh, left the heap. So we put a lot of stuff in the heap. And the first heap starts with, I mean, it's the same story, I guess, everywhere, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 30 gigs. Uh, hello, stop the world GCs. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll talk about that too. <laughs> and what primarily was happening with at least the infrastructure team was you were spending more time maintaining the system rather than writing uh, new features. Um, one other thing uh, that happened was it was really getting hard to add new features. So for example, business wanted to add things like delivery. You want to find out all the restaurants that deliver in the next 15 minutes, or you want to book a table uh, at a restaurant for some time. Uh, without some sort of real-time indexing, this is really hard to get. Um, one of the other big issues was analyzers could not be simply iterated upon, because that meant a complete backfill. Complete backfill meant somebody had to go take the time, spin up a parallel cluster, do all the indexing from source, um, and it's just too much of a chore to do. Um, cool. So now that we are convinced that we needed a newer system, what are the requirements of the system? Well, the one requirement handed down to us uh, from management was, since this is mostly an infrastructure project, uh, we need not, we, the mandate was we cannot cause regressions in the uh, relevance or the quality. Uh, maybe some edge cases are fine, but we really cannot uh, say, okay, we can't rank the results the same way. So that's one thing, which meant we had to go open our leaf search node, which for the most part we treated as a black box. Now we have to open it up and look inside it and see what it is doing, and how can we port these uh, components out into Elasticsearch. So I don't talk about the indexing here, uh, but it's pretty similar, uh, except the ranking part. So uh, let's look at a search query. A search query comes in. Uh, again, this is a REST, one, uh, REST uh, uh, behind the REST API. So then we generate a Lucene uh, query, uh, which is fine. We could potentially map this to something in Elasticsearch, maybe. Then there's an analysis component, um, which is a bunch of Java classes. Uh, of course, there is the ranking. Now, what does the ranking do? We have custom um, Lucene scorers, queries, and weights, um, and we rely on the Lucene index. But we also rely on, like I said before, the Java heap. OK, what does the heap have? The heap has things like business field cache. Uh, yes, we still use field cache because, again, this is old code base. And this is, we started with Lucene 2. I think we did one port to Lucene 3. Um, and we still have the field cache in. And it quickly. Um, uh, started adding features to it, uh, or more fields to it, rather. And then there is this interesting piece here called the miscellaneous data. So like I said before, we would have a lot of different uh, engineers working on this code base, typically who would be the users of the um, uh, infrastructure. But in this case, they were the ones writing the code, the relevance engineers. So let's say I want to add a new feature called CTR, or click-through rate. What this, potentially, what this typically means is, uh, in the search and the kind of ads world is, uh, for a given business, what are the top K queries that it was clicked for? 
uh, this really helps you like score a business better. Now, this cannot be represented easily in a field cache, um, so we just put this in a map because why not? We have access to maps, um, and this kept growing. Cool. So, coming back to what we need to port over, um, just a summary of the previous slide. We need to port over the ranking, the analyzers, the data on uh, Java Heap, and some uh, advanced features like highlights and logging. By logging, what I mean is the um, kind of we send back the dictionary of the top K uh, scores and the reason for the score, such that let's say it's a dictionary of feature to a double, where the feature is the actual feature and the double is the score of that feature. So this helps us our offline training to know um, how to score, retrain the model. So the other teams at Yelp had been using Elasticsearch for the smaller use cases. Um, so this seemed like a natural fit. Uh, and it was JVM based again, so we said, okay, since we have a lot of uh, code in uh, Java, Elasticsearch has this plugin uh, API architecture where we can plug in our Java code. So let's see how our um, components map to the uh, plugins. So for pretty much most part, there's a one-to-one -one mapping. There's a script plugin, there's an analysis plugin, there is doc values, um, especially in the later versions of Lucene and Elasticsearch. Um, and then there is this uh, overarching like search plugin, which pretty much can override anything. So let's take a look at them by one by one now. It's a custom ranking. Uh, again, we need to house our scoring code in the script plugin. The key here is Elasticsearch provides you different entry points, uh, and you kind of need it's like boilerplate code, but you need to uh, put your code in these different sections. And what's interesting is uh, you need to know your scope. So at the lowest level is Elasticsearch will call your, for example, uh, search script dot run as double on every single document. So this is important for performance because you cannot do like expensive operations here. Uh, then there is code which it calls at a per segment level. Um, the other interesting thing here is with Elasticsearch, one shard comprises sorry, of multiple segments, and it goes linearly over all the segments. Um, so if you can do something just once, per query per shard, you would rather do it at the per shard level, not the segment, um, and this helps like gain performance. So for example, we would ship a lot of query parameters over from our um, service to Elasticsearch, and these would be uh, JSON. For the most part, it could be a parts of your model, which we had to deserialize. So doing that at the shard level makes more sense than per segment, because, then it's, because if your shard has many, many segments, especially if you have real-time indexing, then it's going to be slow. And then there are certain things you can do just once per JVM instance, which is like plug-in instantiation. Um, I guess the key part here is uh, you should know the scopes. And ES changes these names and the factories and the leaf factories around a lot. So the best uh, way to do this is every new version, um, once your code compiles, just turn on your favorite debugger uh, or editor and step through like for a couple of documents. The analyzers uh, were some fun too. Um, so on the face of it, okay, we have analysis plugin and we can use uh, get analyzers and drop our code there. The one issue for us was we were using a much older version of Lucene. Um, now the bright fix, which is the second bullet point here, is let's upgrade all this to the later version of Lucene. But we don't know how that would actually change the behavior. So that means now another potential for regression in our results, which we didn't want. So the quick uh, fix or hack uh, in this case was uh, using shading. So shading is uh, like a plugin provided by uh, certain build tools. For example, uh, Maven. Uh, this is a Maven um, XML uh, uh, taken out of the screenshot taken out of the our Palm XML, where we could relocate your R, Apache, Lucene to Calm, Yelp, Search, Old School, yada yada yada, R, Apache. So what can happen then is we take this jar now and drop it on Elasticsearch. So when you import R, Apache, Lucene it's going to use the later one, which Elasticsearch has. But when you import Calm Yelp Search, it's going to use the older Lucene. So we had this bridge in analyzers where at the entry point of uh, the analysis code, we would have a wrapper analyzer, which called our old analyzer. Now, this is tricky and it's quite risky because uh, the bridge definitely like, breaks on certain edge cases, like it broke for us for highlighting and stuff, because things like offsets, they just like Lucene gets stricter and stricter with like, backwards going offsets and stuff. So it could potentially break. I'm not saying run this in production, but if you want to get something up and running quickly, um, this kind of worked for us. Um, of course, uh, data of the Java heap, that was uh, 
pretty much um, one of the big wins of going to ES, like we just move everything to document values. The other nice thing was we were able to run our ranker completely oblivious of the backend. So the ranker would have an API which would say document.get, the field name, and then the implementation was, in this case, using um, search scripts. Cool. Uh, one interesting thing we had to add uh, to the uh, Elasticsearch as a patch was uh, the CTR data, like I mentioned before. Um, Elasticsearch had the ability to store blobs, but we couldn't really read them as doc values uh, in search scripts. Um, so we had to like uh, structure our own data as a byte buffer, put it in, and we could read it out. And because it's your own custom format, it's really fast too. So that's how we got around like not having uh, the uh, CTR in the heap. Um, certain other features like highlights, code components, these are all also implementable. You need, need to look at some of uh, the documentation is not great, but you need to look at the fetch subphase, look at some implementations, um, and go from there. I could spend a lot more time talking about performance, um, but here's some highlights. Um, use the profile API. It's really cool. It tells it, it told us a lot of things like okay, aggregations are really slow. Global ordinals uh, are the cause of it. Um, uh, like I said before, um, shard scale up to a point. Then there is the overhead of just maintaining them. Uh, doc values is good, and doing simple things like just doing JSTAG if a system is slow will tell you okay what's on the top of my stack all the time. Uh, CMS did not work for us. Um, we had a cluster doc launch for a few weeks before we went live. And every single day, CMS um, caused a lot of issues, so we've been using G1. All right, so now that we have moved over, how does our search architecture, uh, the, the, what are the benefits of this? We don't have to deal with the thousands of lines of code now, which is managed by Elasticsearch. Our on-call is a lot happier. Uh, I think, and more importantly, this has like unlocked other teams at Yelp to essentially run the similar uh, filtering, ranking, analysis, and whatnot on their own data, because we can drop these uh, plugins on their clusters, like ads, for example, or request a code. Uh, what is the other new functionality that we added to uh, using uh, ES, which would have been harder otherwise? One is hosting uh, our models in Elasticsearch. So before, so before this, we were passing a lot of the model in the query itself. And some other teams started doing stuff like, let's pull out the data from ES. Uh, hit the network bandwidth, keep pulling out till that point, and then rescore outside in model servers. That doesn't really scale. So how could we score on Elasticsearch? Um, luckily, we found this plugin called Learning to Rank, developed by OSC. Um, the idea here is post your features and models to ES separately, offline. And then uh, in compute time, you can actually calculate the scores. Um, I'll go into it on this slide. So here what we do is we upload the features and models via REST API. Uh, and you tell learning to rank, hey, my feature one is just my plugin, which is a function score query. And then it, let it do what it wants to do with feature one, two. Uh, another feature could be a painless script. A feature could be a Lucene derived expression, and so on. And then you post a model which combines all these features and tells it how to compute. In the case of a linear model, it's just a linear math equation. Uh, we also use XGBoost in production, which is more of a tree form. Um, so for every document, we do this. Then it comes back to the plugin. It does the final compute, and it gives us the result. So this way, uh, the ES query is now really tiny. We just need to send in the model name and the query time parameters. So as of today, Yelp has been a collaborator to the LTR. It didn't really work out of the box for us because of some of the advanced use cases. And I talk up more about it in this Haystack talk, uh, which I gave la sometime last month. Um, and it had some performance issues which we had to fix, too. Uh, but we use it today for many of our critical uh, workflows. And if you guys want considering like hosting models in ES, uh, consider using this. Contributions are welcome, too. Uh, finally, we are hiring uh, across the board and also for search. And this is some of our blogs. Uh, I have written um, a blog post about our uh, uh, migration, too. And that's it, yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Maybe we can have one short question. Yes. Give me a second. Uh, I, I, the question will be short. I don't know about your answer, but the you you said uh, 
you know, goal was not to change ranking at all, right? <laughs> so I'm curious, uh, how did you validate that? How did we validate that? Oh, uh, for the most part, we didn't. So like I said, uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we ran into issues like analyzers. Um, our highlights are broken. So we had to go have this conversation with like product or management. Okay, highlights are broken in these cases. Do you really care? And they would be like, uh, maybe we don't. But what, I guess what more, more important was we had to get a POC out in like a time-bounded window where let's say 80 to 90% of the stuff worked, uh, which is where the approach worked well. And then we could argue about, oh, but here are all the wins we are having where we don't have to do management of the cluster. On-call is happier. You have better, there's no attrition. People are not leaving the job. So that kind of balanced out with the edge cases. Yeah, so, so now that you've learned that maybe you didn't, that wasn't such a concern, could you make deeper changes in the analyzers without worrying so much? Like Sorry. porting them all to newer Lucene, are you gonna, anyway, this is, I'll, I'll ask you later. All right, okay. Okay, not that was short question in the end. Uh, let's thank Uwesh again. Okay. okay.